your spiritual friends are a little bit floaty, airy fairy up here and all in the clouds. If you've got someone that's in your life that's just constantly in this perpetual cycle where they're just like healing, 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 healing. Your non-spiritual friends are just talking about the things that have happened in their day to day. That that is <laughs> those people ground me. Like I actually love it. My partner grounds the fuck out of me. Sometimes I can go a little bit off there into this spiral of thoughts about these things, and then sometimes I just speak to him, and I just oh, just feel like I'm back in the now, in the here, in the now. I have friends that are like that, and I'm saying this all to say I have done all of this. Like the reason I can see this is because I've been in these places. I'm not just saying it because I'm like, oh, I'm seeing this in that person. I'm seeing it in that person. I've been through it. I've lived it. I've experienced it, and I know that it's not the best for us, but I know it's a process that we have to move through. Hello, my darlings. Please do strap in, get comfortable. We're going to talk about what I realized a year and a half into my Kundalini awakening and we're going to get deep. I'm not going to hold back. I'm going to be vulnerable. So please do get yourself a tea, get yourself a cacao, get yourself a coffee, get yourself a glass of wine if you want to go all out. And yeah, let's get deep, shall we? I'm going to be looking down at my notes during this and this is going to be a free flowing episode because you know how I am. You know, I don't necessarily like to script things because I just can't remember. I don't know how people script. I really don't. We're just going to get deep in the subject. Okay. We're just going to talk about everything. Excuse me. So I am a year and a half into my Kundalini awakening. If you are new to my channel, hi, hello, welcome. My name is Lauren. It's lovely to have you here. If you have had a Kundalini awakening and you are really, really dying to know other people's experiences, I've created a whole playlist on my YouTube channel. So please go and check it out. I've got plenty more videos to come. This is part of a whole series that I'm making that is an endless series. It's not going to have a number to it because there's going to be so many things going forward that I want to talk about. Today we're talking about what I realized a year and a half into my kundalini awakening so as it stands today I am about a year and a half in I had my kundalini awakening in January of 2023 and it changed the trajectory of my life I definitely feel like a different person and the thing is with the kundalini you know the kundalini is related to the snake the coil that goes up your spine and out of your crown and if you see a snake as a symbolism the snake sheds its skin throughout its whole lifetime over and over and over again so imagine having the kundalini awakening it is as if you're being reborn again oh, i've got chills actually because just even thinking about it visually in my head it's like the snake activates and then like blood lasts up through your body and out of your crown and it's as if it's coming out of yourself and then your skin is like the banana peel the skin of the snake that just folds away you have to relearn parts of yourself and let go of parts of yourself like shed old patterns and behaviors and habits and then be reborn into the more real authentic true version of yourself and every time that happens <laughs> it's never just it's never ending by the way it will happen over and over again so there's a lot that i've realized within this year and a half there's a lot that's happened within this year and a half i've been on a spiritual journey for the last decade I'm 30 years old now and I started when I was like 20, 21 years old. Honestly, even now, like if I look back to how I was then and the different stages of my journey that I've been on, I'm at this point now where I genuinely like even the spiritual beliefs that I've come to connect with and understand have changed and have grown and have evolved. And there's certain behavioral habits and patterns that I am having to outgrow now at this point in my life. It's a constant evolution and a constant shed being reborn again is such a big process it's such a big deal like when you have any awakening it's a big deal it's a big process it's a massive shift energetically not just like on the energetic levels but physically as well your nervous system is being shaken up and your body and your energetic system is all having to come back into alignment so when that happens like a lot of things do shift you just see life in such a different way as soon as it happened to me it was like I couldn't look at life the same way again it was such a clear perspective on things and it was just like the veil of everything had just been lifted from me the fog had cleared and like you know when they say you've got rose tinted glasses on it's like that had gone and I was like seeing the true reality you can't unsee it you can't put that fog back down or the mask the veil back over you literally like are looking at it but what I realized in this year and a half it made me really sit down and think about who I really want to be as a person are the things that I have wanted in the last few years are they still the things that I want going forward and are they still the things that I want to call into my life are they still 
still the things that I want to let go of who do I really want to be and I look at it from a perspective of like and it might be different for other people based on age and things like that but because I'm 30 and in the future I do want to have children I do want to settle down it makes me think about like who do I want to be as a mother like how do I want to be when I raise my children how do I want to raise my kids and how do I want to show up for my partner how do I want to show up for my family how do I want to show up for my friends how do I want to show up in my career what do I really want to do with my life it's like it gives you this whole new system shake up so you have to like recalibrate check in with yourself and just be like is this really what I want is there any new things that I actually feel like is more aligned to me as a person now and who I want to step into compared to like what I've been wanting because sometimes we don't realize that there's certain things that we want in life that are very much based on like societal pressures and things like that so it just really made me sit back and reflect and I've had so many moments where I've sat back and reflected on like who I really want to be as a person so that's been a massive one this kundalini awakening has showed me where I wasn't showing up with full integrity it was showing me where I wasn't showing up as my full self showing up in full integrity basically means like practice what you preach are you preaching and are you living in alignment to what you're preaching because if you're not you're not being in integrity to who you are as a person or like who you're saying that you are so you're not basically being true to who you are as a person you know people can go ahead and preach about all their spiritual beliefs to someone then they're not actually acting out in their life true to those spiritual beliefs that means they're not being in integrity to who they really are preaching they are being if that makes any sense (laughs) um so it just showed me where in my life I was not showing up in integrity and where in my life I needed to show up more in integrity to who I was as a person and it does combine with like who do I really want to be and how do I really want to show up in the world and then where can I show up more in integrity to who I am as a person like truly who I am as a person and then that also goes down to showing up authentically I have actually recently had someone make a few comments on my YouTube shorts about me expressing showing up authentically I just don't really agree with what they've said to be honest because they've basically said like don't be emotional don't show up authentic if you show up with emotion you're going to hurt someone's feelings everyone should just be placid and basically put a mask on and that to me is like that's what I have done in the past though and I was so unhappy and I've seen people in the past put a mask on to try and please people around them because they feel like they need to fit into this certain societal expectation which is just so not right I personally believe the best thing that the spiritual journey has brought me is learning to be authentically me and just showing up as who I truly am and I can definitely be you know a scatty mess (laughs) I can definitely be a scatty and all over the place if you've watched my vlogs on my channel you'll see like I can be like well like all over the place I get mad hyperactivity then also like super chilled I am a bit scatty I do think I've got ADHD it's something that I am trying to go through the process of figuring out but like If I was to not show that side of me, I would not be me. And we shouldn't feel um, like we have to hide ourselves to please others when really what is the beauty in people is the authenticity. I've found for myself within this year and a half, a big thing that I've realized is how important authenticity is to me and not just how I show up authentically, but to how other people show up to me. I don't really feel comfortable around people that aren't being true to themselves. I would rather be around people and surrounded by people that are showing up as themselves and this is a big thing that I can say that the spiritual community can offer is the permission slip to be your true self and to just show up authentically and be authentic like do the things that lights you up show up how you want to show up as long as you're being kind and genuine and lovely and sweet and you're not being a horrible person then what's the problem I remember in my past, in my previous relationship, that was many, many years ago, I wasn't showing up as my true self because I felt like if I was going to be showing up as like this bubbly, scatty self of mine, that was a side that I was like hiding because I thought, oh, if I show up like that, he's not going to love me. There's always this underlining fear of being seen in a certain way and I think that's where it comes from some people are just scared to show up authentically because they're scared of something that might cause them to change their mind about them and for me it was like 
I'm scared that I'm not going to be lovable if I show up with my sensitivity. If I show that I'm an emotional person, then I'm not going to be loved. I'm going to be too much. If I am, you know, hyperactive and bubbly, a little bit scatty, people are going to feel uncomfortable because it's too much. By doing that, I'm hurting myself because I'm having to try and be the right person for everyone around me, but I'm not allowing myself to be the right person for me. I think the most loving thing you can do for yourself is be authentic and be truly who you are. And it takes time. It really, truly does take time. It takes time to peel back those layers. And I'm still learning to do this, but I'm feeling like this current year and a half has really helped me step into that even more through this Kundalini awakening and being in a relationship with a partner that's so accepting of who I am. I'm so much more like scatty and weird compared to him. And he's so lovely and he just loves it. And I love that he loves it. And I just think, why was I scared all this time? So being authentic is a big thing that I do preach on my channel because I believe that like it's the gift to yourself. Like you are a gift to this world. So don't dim your light because you're worried about what other people will think. The right people around you will celebrate you for that and will love you for all of you. The people that won't love you for that, then it's something that they need to look at within themselves, I personally think, as long as you're not being a horrible person, as I said. Another thing that I learned within this year and a half, a big thing, was learning new relational habits. So by this, I mean learning to relate to people in different ways. Now, I've always been a person that likes to try and understand everyone's perspective on things. And I like to try and put myself in other people's shoes to understand where they're coming from I've always been very interested about like just people in general and how people work and how people have different opinions and views on life and how other people relate to each other but my relational habits have been like in a romantic relationship in my friendships and in my family relations so learning new relational habits within this year and a half I had my kundalini awakening in the January of 2023 and then I started speaking to my partner in the March time even just being in that relationship with him has really taught me how to converse and relate to him in a way that's so much more raw and real and pure and true true to who I am and it's not that I haven't been that in the past in my previous relationships I've just been so scared to speak my truth I've been so scared to share my needs my wants my desires with others even just setting boundaries has been really hard for me in the past and by not being able to set boundaries in the past has caused me to be in really awful relationships and I have had one relationship that wasn't unhealthy but I didn't set enough boundaries at the beginning so this like expectation got created and you know I just wasn't happy I was afraid to share or set boundaries because I was afraid always that it always came down to the root of like I'm afraid that they'll leave me I'm afraid that they won't love me anymore they won't want me anymore but being in this relationship has really taught me that it's safe to do that it's safe to actually express your desires and that you know it's all about like building a foundation and building new habits so that you can have a really beautiful growing relationship you can grow together this kundalini awakening has given me the courage and it's helped me push beyond my fears to just know that it's like okay well if I express this to him and he accepts it then that's amazing if he doesn't then it's just pointing me in another direction and that is also a blessing to know that it's trying to push me beyond my limits it's as if the kundalini awakening has revealed all of your fears but it reveals your fears so rapidly and so intensely that you literally cannot not face them like you can't just push them aside like you might have done in the past like they're so there for me I I, a fear will come up and I'm like I have to face it I have to face it for the better good of myself yeah like learning to relate in different ways you know also not just being the one to be like these are my wants and these are my needs I want to know what his needs are I want to know what his wants are like it's so important that we relate on an equal level and that he has a voice in this relationship and I also have a voice and that we're equal in that sense and it's not just about the woman and it's not just about the man it's about both of us and about what we both want and how we both want to be and how we both want to relate it's so important to me that it is equal because yeah again in previous relationships it's always just been about the man for me it's always been about what they want and what they need and how they want the relationship to be and then I've then neglected myself and my wants and my needs to please them and satisfy them them and it's like it can't be that way and I know for a fact that it can be reversed I see and I know people that are in relationships where it's all about the woman it's all about what she wants it's all about what she needs and then the man gets left behind and his wants and needs get neglected and I just don't think that's fair at all I think 
the masculine and the feminine should be so equal I'm going to come on to this topic now because I'm talking about it but I haven't actually written this down but another thing that I'm learning even more you know in the last year and a half after my kundalini awakening is how important it is to honor the masculine I don't know whether this will trigger women but I have had a really shitty experience in the past with men but that doesn't mean to say that every man is like that and um my relationship with my dad and my relationship with the masculine actually as a whole has been so much better ever since this awakening. It has been beautiful. Now the men in my life, my dad, my partner, his dad, my brother, my friends, I honor them so much. I honor their journey so much. The masculine can bring so much value to our lives. And I just think that done is the time where we're saying, men are all the same and men are this and that I, I don't I, I don't agree I don't agree I think that it's important that we honor the men the masculine they've been through a hard time we have been through a hard time too I know as women but we are at this place now where it's like let's all be equal they are just as amazing as women they can bring so much to our lives just as we can bring so much to their lives and when we work in a place relationally where we are honoring one another life is so much more beautiful relationships are so much more beautiful appreciating the masculine is so beautiful and then when you appreciate your man they appreciate you back and it's just this constant beautiful give and take exchange of love and energy and just beauty so i really wanted to touch on that relational habits have been a big one for me because i was single for five years before i met my partner and it's been such a journey with him and it's been different to most people that i know we we didn't rush into our relationship we took our time we took it easy we really got to know each other before we made that solid commitment to each other it's just been so healing in so many ways and if it's something that people want me to talk about let me know because I will be more than happy to talk about it he's such a babe he is going to be on my channel a lot more he might already be on my channel more now if you're watching this later in life so the next thing is honoring everyone's journey spiritual or not so within this year and a half after my spiritual awakening I have realized so much about the people around me the community that I've connected with on a spiritual sense and then the people around me that aren't on the spiritual journey but I'm friends with or I work with or are just my family members I realized that everyone creates boxes there's lots of boxes everywhere that people want to fit in and I know that people just want to feel like they're part of something and I get it I've been there but like I am so multi-dimensional and so interested in so many different things so many different subjects so many different cultures that just being one way and just thinking that your friend should only be spiritual and you know if someone's not on that journey then they're not for you to make it like really cliche I think it's so important to honor everyone's journey everyone's on a journey it doesn't have to be spiritual but everyone's on a journey you can learn so much from every single person in your life spiritual or not some people might not ever go on to the spiritual journey and some people might but that's not your problem (laughs) shine your light show up authentically and you know share your interests and your hobbies with them but never push the spiritual journey on anyone to me it's just important to honor everyone in your life whether they're on the spiritual journey or not because life isn't just about that life is about everything as a whole life is about the love that is surrounding us life is about the people in our lives life is about family life is about friends life is about love it's all about love it's all about love it's all about presence it's all about gratitude it's all about living in the moment and just enjoying the moment but to me i just think like everyone's on such a journey everyone's living through their own experience and it's so different some people are going for a really hard time some people are not and i just think it's it's important to recognize that like you know everyone is going through something everyone is moving through something and just being there for the people that need you and being there for yourself also within the last year and a half i've realized that there's a lot of jargon and nonsense and bullshit actually that is actually within the spiritual community but it made me realize that it's not just within certain cliques and certain places it is actually everywhere you get the bullshit you get the light you get the dark you get the fucking nonsense within every fucking community personally I'm gonna say because I have seen so much bullshit in the spiritual community the last year and a half I've seen so much falseness I've seen so much manipulation that it actually really freaked me out and made me take a huge massive step back and it's also a big thing that comes back to my spiritual beliefs like it's a big thing that I'm still 
trying to understand talking about spirituality and about healing and all that kind of stuff on my channel I'm not really sure whether it's going to remain like that I much prefer just the lifestyle as a whole rather than like again fitting into this box of like spirituality because I think we're all multi-dimensional beings some people are this one way but some people aren't I don't want to be stuck in this box and I also feel a little bit unsure about how I feel about certain belief systems and, and certain ways people are showing up and I went through a bit of a journey in this last year and a half where I realized a lot about certain people in my life who were part of my spiritual friends how manipulating people can be I'm not saying it's all like that I think it made me realize that like the true people in my life the real ones are the ones that are authentic and some of the people that are the most authentic people in my life the most true real people in my life are not on a spiritual journey and that makes me honor that person because I'm just like, you are fucking amazing. There's no need to change. And this is a big thing. Like when you go into the spiritual journey, people just want to change and grow and evolve. And that's amazing. But like, are you changing for the better or are you just learning different tools and techniques to use to your advantage on other people? Because that I don't like that I don't like it just made me think like okay I've seen enough and again this is another thing I've realized within the year and a half of my kundalini awakening is that the veil I talk about the veil being lifted right you can only see the truth in the situations it's so much more clear like you literally feel like people are so obvious to you at this point like the veil's lifted you're seeing directly the truth. It's lucky, but it's also really uncomfortable. Like it's a good thing and it's a bad thing. Sometimes we don't realize how much people are putting on a false mask or trying to get their way with certain things. I don't know. I don't know whether I'm going on a bit of a tangent here. I haven't been hanging around with the spiritual community for the longest time. And I just, I just don't know how I feel about it anymore, to be honest. Another thing that I've talked about a little bit is questioning spiritual beliefs. Now, I have mentioned this a couple of times in this video. It's been a big thing that I'm still trying to figure out i'm still a bit like ugh, about obviously i've touched on the veil being lifted and me seeing like the truth in certain situations and it's been really uncomfortable and i've been through experiences in the last year and a half where i've had a friendship breakdown i've just seen a lot of bullshit i actually went to a festival last year I nearly had a panic attack because of how much falseness I was seeing. It just made me feel like I was like, I don't know who on earth I can trust here. I've listened to a few podcast episodes about spiritual cults and I've also seen a few series about spiritual cults. And it just makes me think like, oh my God, I actually swear I have seen certain things and I have been around certain communities of people that are in that kind of like borderline space i've seen how other people treat other people and how they really act behind closed doors and i've seen how people speak about other people and then how they act to their face and i just don't know what to feel connected with at the moment and i'm i'm moving through this process currently right now where i'm like in you know a bit of like a i'm not really sure what I believe in right now like I believe that there's something bigger than all of us out there I do believe in energy but I just feel like there's so many different belief systems and it can get so intertwined and so overlapped and it just gets very confusing and I see people that preach about spirituality and their journey and their process and all of this kind of stuff but then they're not showing up in integrity to what they're saying and they talk about other people behind their back in a really fucking negative way and there's so many things I've seen that just makes me question a lot about the community as a whole the spiritual community as a whole I feel like I'm being really negative about the spiritual community but like I have had and I do have so many conscious beautiful people in my life that are really real and are really true to who they are and how they show up in the world I don't know I'm just not I'm not sure about things I'm I'm still a bit like hmm it's just this light and this dark dance that keeps happening within the world and within every fucking community that I've seen and I've been around like I just don't feel like I want that box anymore. I don't want to be like niching to this one specific thing or like only being around those kind of people because I just feel like I just want to be free. It doesn't feel very freeing being in these certain things. I don't know. I'm just feeling like I'm questioning my beliefs right now. I can't be one way only when it comes to like my beliefs in life. I'm so much more open to understanding everything and not attaching myself to one thing. Just being open to understanding everything and just being open to the knowledge and the lessons and being open to the experiences and open to people in life and just observing and more so experiencing my own things my spiritual or my conscious beliefs I believe in consciousness when it comes down to like spirituality 
hmm. I mean, people could say that about Kundalini because Kundalini is very out there and very different. But like, I know it's something I've experienced physically. It's an experience I'm still moving through and will now be moving through for the rest of my life. And people might not believe that. And that is honestly okay. Like people don't have to believe what I'm saying. People don't have to like resonate with what I'm saying, but it's just an experience that I'm having and an experience that I want to share. I think that's where I'm coming forward now. Like I'm just coming forward with like, openness and curiosity towards things but not attaching myself to anything specific I just am more so curious about consciousness about authenticity about being true to you and all these different things that come intertwined with it I don't know whether I'm making sense wow this is quite long isn't it so the next thing that I've realized in the last year and a half I'm sweating by the way oh my god sweating so much I cannot even tell you um what else I realized within this year and a half is how ungrounded I was for like the longest time so I found that when people are on the spiritual path and they're thinking so much about the past basically like people are wanting to heal from the past people are wanting to like manifest for the future all these kind of things right I do think they're really beneficial I'm not saying they're not but I think what I realized within this year and a half was how ungrounded I was doing all of that because I was always here and there but I was never here in this moment I almost felt like all my energy was like up in my head and above me and like going up into the universe and then pouring out into the past and pouring over into the future but I never really felt like I was grounded in this reality in this here in this now it made me realize how much I was leaking my energy in all these different places but I wasn't in this moment I wasn't grounded to this earth and there's also like this big massive you know wave of like myself believing in like spiritual extraterrestrial beings Syrian beings and Arcturians and Pleiadians and all these kind of beings out there and up there and I've definitely had the most incredible ayahuasca experience connecting with the Syrian beings but like it's so out of body it's so not here in this reality and it's so ungrounded to me I almost feel like there's a lot of people that I have seen and I know personally within that community that are just constantly on this cycle of like trauma, trauma, healing, trauma, healing, trauma, healing, plant medicine, healing, trauma, healing, plant medicine, healing, trauma, healing, like just constant. There's no presence. And so I, I feel really bad saying it because I've been in this place before where I've just been, you know, scatty really it's like you're all over the place trying to like heal this and grow here and learn about this and unlearn that you're just so all over the place and you're just not grounded into this reality and because I've experienced that and I've been there myself and I think just like coming out of this kundalini awakening and moving through this year I very much realized that I was obviously really ungrounded and realized how much I was in that space of like always talking about something spiritual with my spiritual friends and it was never just like how having a laugh about the now and about random things that happen in life and just funny like I realized how important like laughter and just like reality is to me and I mean reality is in like just the fucking here and the now the random shit that happens in life and the random shit that like I don't know Carol said to you at work or like the random fucking thing that happened in you know the shop that made you laugh or like things like that like for some reason like, I was just missing that so much you actually find that like and this is another thing that I realized that your non-spiritual friends are actually really amazing for grounding you back into this reality. That is a big thing that I want to say. Your spiritual friends are a little bit floaty, airy fairy up here and all in the clouds, right? Say you've got someone that's in your life that's just constantly in this perpetual cycle where they're just like healing, 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 healing. Your non-spiritual friends are just talking about the things that have happened in their day-to-day, -day, random stuff, funny stuff. That That is, <laughs> those people ground me. Like, I actually love it. I, my partner grounds the fuck out of me. Sometimes I can go a little bit off there and I can go into this spiral of thoughts about these things. And then but sometimes I just speak to him and I just, oh, I just feel like I'm back in the now, in the here, in the now. I have friends that are like that. And I'm saying this all to say, I have done all of this. Like the reason I can see this is because I've been in these places. I'm not just saying it because I'm like, oh, I'm seeing this in that person. I'm seeing it in that person. No, I'm actually, I've been through it. I've lived it, I've experienced it. And I know that it's not the best for us, but I know it's a process that we have to move through. Life is a fucking journey. It's a fucking roller coaster. It's a process. It's, it's ever evolving. You spiral up, 
your life, you spiral down your life. You spiral up and down and up and down and up and down. And it's always like that. It's never just like this fucking flat line. It's always like blah, 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 over there and blah, 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 over there, you know? I just find that the more deep in the process of healing, 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 I just felt really ungrounded. I felt really ungrounded all the time, to be honest. And then I had this Kundalini awakening and it made me realize how grounded I actually needed to be. And I think that's why I just stopped all my spiritual practices and just ended up focusing mostly on just presence and and being in the present moment and then like realized that I've isolated myself from quite a lot of the spiritual lot and then just wanted to be around my friends from school and wanted to be around people that are just like funny and just that make me laugh and don't talk about trauma and stuff like that all the time it was just like oh, just that's what I needed I just needed that like oh, okay this is nice like it, it I don't yeah like I I sound like a bit of a hypocrite saying it because I know I've been that person that gets deep into like these uncertainties in life and the past and all of that kind of stuff but I just think you just reach a point in your journey where you're just like I'm tired I'm tired of it all now I'm tired of having these constant conversations about fucking trauma it's just like can we just talk about something that's fun please <laughs> because it is tiring you know you will get to that point sometime people might agree or not agree with what I'm saying and I'm not here for everyone to agree with <laughs> I'm just here to talk about my experience and what I recognize and what I'm seeing and what I'm learning and what I'm fucking what I've realized in the last year and a half so one of the other things I've realized is how much and I think I've kind of touched on this already how much I don't want to be squeezed into a box on my channel for example if you land on my channel you kind of see what to expect from it right I'm starting to realize that I'm so all over the place when it comes to like organization when it comes to having ideas I'm all over the place because I like a lot of different things I like to talk about a lot of different things I like to experience a lot of different things I like creating lots of different things so it's really hard for me to be like a niche. Do you know what I mean? So I just have found that I'm like, I'm trying to show up the way other people are. It's a tricky one because I'm almost feeling like I don't want my channel to just be based on spirituality. I don't. I don't. I really don't. Um, <laughs> and this is probably not the Kundalini experience that you might have thought you would get in today. But I am just being real. I, I am just being real about what I'm what I'm recognizing in my life ever since it happened to me but yeah being squeezed into a box just feels so limiting it feels like I'm limiting myself and I cannot limit myself because I'm just like so interested in so many different things that I think I would be doing myself a disservice if I wasn't sharing all my interests <laughs> and it changes all the time and I just I just seem to struggle to stick to one thing or one niche specifically so I think that that's one big thing I've realized is that I'm just like I just don't want to fit into a box I don't want to be squeezed into the societal way or the right way to do things if there even is a right way I don't think there is a right or wrong way of doing things I think you just need to do things the way you want to do things you just need to show up the way you want to show up you need to edit the way you want to edit you need to create the way that you want to create don't try and show up the way other people are doing it or have the same pattern as other people because it's not gonna be true to you so again it just comes back to authenticity create from a place of love create from a place of joy create from a place of inspiration laughter and love and that's all it needs to be like there's no need to put any extra stresses on things or have these boxes so yeah if you do go on my channel you will see there's all sorts of content on here there's travel content self-development content lots of different vlogs kundalini content i've had my channel for seven years and i've got like well over 100 videos so you can have a field day looking at all oh i've got dreadlock content how could i forget about my dreadlock content i have got loads of dreadlock content which i obviously don't have dreadlocks anymore but i pivot i've pivoted so many times because i'm just like this is what i'm interested in now and this is what i'm interested in now and this is what i'm interested in now like i'm not just like one way fits all i'm interested in different things at different times in my life so i just need to accept that that is how i live and that is how i am i need to stop trying to limit myself in that period of my life that's my interest but then it's going to change it's going to change or it's just going to go from that to like adding more to it and adding some something else to it it's just a case of like just going with literal the current interests in life and that might change and you know if you vibe you vibe if you don't then it's cool because you know you've got to follow what you enjoy the urge to create freely rather than one way is definitely how I want to be going forward the urge to create freely because creation to me is like a big part of my life I do work a nine to five job but doing this creating content is something I just absolutely fucking love to do so I just do it because I love doing it I don't get anything from it physically like I just enjoy it and I like connecting with others I like inspiring others and showing others that 
you can be who you want to be and it is all going to be fine like you will be okay there's just a lot that I enjoy doing so I spend a lot of my spare time doing this the next thing that I've realized in the year and a half after my kundalini awakening is the importance of taking breaks pausing basically taking breaks and pausing in your journey I've probably stressed this within everything else that I've said you just need to give yourself time to chill out <laughs> stop making life so serious I actually talked about this in a video on my channel the importance of not taking life too seriously the spiritual journey too seriously because it can just get really heavy and intense and it ends up just dulling the spark away of life and I just think that we want the sparkle back in our lives so blah, 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 blah. I don't even know whether you can hear that because I'm moving this around but we just want the sparkle back and find enjoyment in life life is too short to be miserable all the time it really is I know it's not easy for everyone I know it's hard for people and trust me I literally had an emotional breakdown yesterday so I'm not perfect I'm not saying that you should always be happy and you should never be sad I think it's important to feel your feelings I think it's important to experience what you're feeling in the moment I was feeling really Really overwhelmed yesterday for a multitude of reasons and I just let myself get upset I let myself cry I let myself feel frustrated and a little bit stressed I feel a lot better today I'm just not attaching myself to it forever that it actually brings me to the point of depression it could I could attach myself to that feeling and the things that were stressing me out and I could go into a spiral and I could let it drag me down but again life is too short and I don't want to live day to day in that place it's just not worth it I know it's hard for people though trust me I have people in my life that really struggle on a daily basis and all I can do is bring that light into their lives if they don't feel like they've got the light themselves I'm more than happy to bring that light for them and just be that joy that lights them up that will bring me joy to bring them joy so that's just how I am as a person though the importance of boundaries has been a big one as well I found that boundary setting was like one of the hardest things for me to do especially when I talk about relational habits and things like that I've had to learn to set boundaries and it has been a huge challenge for me I did experience last year I had to set a lot of boundaries and it was really difficult I hate to make people feel uncomfortable or make people feel like I've upset them or anything it's the last thing that I want to do but then I felt like this person was really getting to me they'd said a couple of things that were just really incredibly insulting towards myself and my family and it really hurt my feelings I knew that it was testing me I knew that it was like okay I need to show up in a way that I actually am learning to say actually I'm not okay with this I would have in the past just allowed that behavior and then when that happens people just walk all over you they manipulate you they take advantage of you and I just couldn't have that this time I could see what was happening and I was like well I need to take the plunge I need to just be straight up set a boundary and if they don't like it then that's that's their issue but I have to do this for myself because I cannot when you're a people pleaser it's so easy for people to walk all over you and it's so hard to break that pattern I just had to set a couple of boundaries a few times to the same person eventually they listened but it was just that was really hard I've had to like learn to set boundaries within my friendships and that has been really hard and incredibly uncomfortable for me to do but I know it's something that I've had to do because it's been something I've allowed for too long to be fair like the response has been better than I thought it would be you know you always think the worst don't you when you're a people pleaser you always think the worst when you think that you need to say something that you know they might feel a bit uncomfortable about but think about how comfortable they're making you feel the right people that love you will understand your boundaries and respect them like you respect theirs so you know it's all about equal give and take that's what I think another thing that I've realized is that a small circle of friends is fine I have been one person in the past I've had different friends in all different places and then I've almost always felt like I've needed to stretch myself so thin to try and actually see everyone to meet everyone's needs to try and make sure that I'm showing up for everyone my circle has actually gotten a lot smaller because I've just been a lot more selective with who I want to spend my time with who shows up for me the most as well again in that equal give and take a small circle of friends is fine like you don't need a massive group of friends it's quality over quantity at the end of the day so that's a big thing I've realized and then I would say the last thing really is this kundalini awakening really has allowed me to really reflect and sit back and reflect on my life reflect on how I really want to show up in the world I think it always comes down to like going back to our childhood self you know the kid in you the little child in you that is literally like being true to themselves eliminate the parents at this point right imagine your child self without all of the encouragement the societal pressures imagine just being your childlike self without all of that nonsense that gets fed to you when you're younger and how they tell you to show up in the world imagine just how you would be as a person if you were still like that vibrant childhood self how you would be and I know not everyone has like the best childhood 
I definitely grew up in a really chaotic household. I just think back to like that little self, the spark that was in me when I was a kid then, just how I was. And I'm like, I want to be that person again. I want to be able to like have her come back and like enjoy life, like from a child's perspective, enjoy life and get excited. Like you would as a child, you know, seeing new things for the first time. And that's so beautiful, you know, to just look at the world in such (gasps) joy and love and excitement and awe like just looking at the world in awe of beauty that is surrounding us and the beauty that we do see i know there's a lot of very very hard stuff going on in the world and it can really make us feel what's the point and it's so difficult sometimes when you have like dreams and goals and it's just difficult to witness the pain that's happening in the world but i just think it's so important to just come from a place of love always just come from a place of love if you can be joyous be joyous there's so much pain that's happening in the world that if there is a select few of us that can bring that joy to people's lives that are struggling and can bring that joy and a smile on people's faces then that that is that's a gift it's a gift that keeps on giving laughter is contagious a smile can be contagious in the best way and why not keep spreading that love and that joy just being real and if you feel stressed about something just being honest about it and straight up about it like i've noticed myself recently be more true to that feeling upset about something and just being like oh my god i actually really fucking upset me (laughs) like it's really upset me or that's really stressed me out but I'm not letting it take over my life you know I'm just staying it in the moment being true to it in the moment and then letting it go and moving on you know I've realized a lot of in this year after my kundalini awakening it's been very eye-opening it's been very different I cannot believe it's been a year and a half it feels like it's been so much longer than that I do feel like I'm in a different place than I was back then and I do know that this is still evolving and still growing and still moving and there might be some things I forgot to mention here but I just feel that the kundalini awakening is honestly just this constant cycle of death and rebirth and you know your fears will come up so much for me it's just so obvious that there's a trigger that comes up in your life and it's so present for you after this awakening that like it's so hard to not face it although I say you know live in the moment and things like that if these things are still coming up for you it's important that you actually do look at it you you will feel so much better for it just don't let it consume your life that's one side note I would say just really try and look at it with grace give yourself love see where you can you know unwire unpattern reprogram and all that kind of stuff and move on from there don't let yourself dwell in the darkness for too long allow yourself to you know shed your skin and then be reborn again over and over and over again because it is going to be continuous and i cannot wait to see where i'm at in five years i'm really intrigued more than anything i'm curious you know intrigued and curious but i don't have an attachment to i don't even know where i'm going to be at in five years i literally have no idea so i'm just curious to what might happen and what might evolve I really hope that this has helped anyone that's listening. I'm sending you so much love. Stay tuned for the next episode. Don't forget to check out the Kundalini playlist on my YouTube channel. If you're interested in watching my full Kundalini awakening story, then please check out the link below. I talk about my whole full experience in full detail and yeah, it's super interesting. So go check it out. Thank you so much for watching. You are a true one if you stay to the end. If you have any video that you would like me to touch on based on Kundalini awakening, please please leave it down in the comment section below. And if you've made it to the end of this video, leave a little emoji in the comments of the little snake. And I'm sending you so much love. I love you all. Have a beautiful day. Take care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.